Hey guys, welcome. We just got back from seeing Mission Impossible Fallout, uh, which I think is like uh, six. the sixth in the series. That's a lot. It's a lot. Considering, like, I don't remember almost anything. I do remember those motorcycles and them jumping and slamming into each other. You know, Ben Stiller did that parody. Yes. This just got a whole lot more impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I guess, what can I say? Uh, did you guys enjoy the film? I really yeah. did. It was very enjoyable. All right. Hell yeah. Because I'm going to say that right at the beginning of the review. There's no spoilers. If you want spoilers, stick around to the end. But this is a film you need to go out and see. Okay? Action-packed. It is action-packed. You, you could tell Tom Cruise is working his ass off. He really goes above and beyond for this series. He broke his leg. What? Yeah, he broke his leg jumping. Which like, scene? Uh, they kept it. In, I think they kept it in too. Like he jumps from a building to another building, and then when he's getting up, you can see him limping. Like he broke his leg. Oh right, right. Oh, when he trailer. like holds on to the side, yeah. and he did look. Lit. I was like, wow, that's kind of weird. But but then he's full sprinting after that. Eight weeks. Later. And when this motherfucker eight is, weeks later. <laughs> when this mo but. His recovery must have been amazing. Oh yeah, or he did the sprinting I, before. I could, I cannot run that fast. Joe can't run that fast. Alex can't run that fast. Definitely and this guy, after leg day, after leg day, I'm done. <laughs> Jelly. This guy is is twice our age, and he just continues to impress, uh, doing all of his own stunts, and that really benefits the film here. You have amazing action sequences. I have to point out the action sequence in the bathroom. What did you guys think about that? It's definitely the highlight of the film. Like, definitely. Not, not like that, that but it's a really great. That was one of the best ones, too. It was the bathroom scene and also the house scenes. Like, every fighting was yeah. spot on. It was well, yeah, very well choreographed. Exactly. The director was the same director that did Rogue Nation. Uh, a lot of the storylines uh, from Rogue Nation carry into this film. So I was a bit lost on specific names and, and maybe uh, syndicate cells that are being continued from the first. But I would say that it, you don't really need to have seen the no. other five. No. In fact, you don't need to see any of the other four. The, 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 the fifth one, Rogue Nation, will help you a little bit. I remember almost nothing about any other Mission Impossible movie, <laughs> other than I kind of liked all of them. Like, they're yeah. all pretty good action I've films. I've seen them all, yeah. So, I, and I don't remember anything about them, so I, was, I wasn't lost at all. It will thoroughly satisfy you. Newcomer uh, Henry Cavill who is, of course, amazing and my favorite. Yeah, the mustache, let's talk about that. Was it worth ruining yes. Justice League? That to... movie <laughs> was already ruined. Yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah. kidding, right. They didn't have to do that. They could have gave him a beer, they could have gave him a mustache. Hey, Superman with a mustache? It's happened before. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, he was a badass in the film. Starts off as sort of an uh, CIA agent, assassin, assassin guy, kind yes. of thing. He's the strong arm of a particular division. He's the hammer version. Hammer. Uh, Tom Cruise is like mm -hmm. the scalpel. More yeah, technical. and and that was really good in the film that they had their own styles. Yes, yeah. that was cool. And you could tell, like one uses tech. Obviously, you have the tech, and then Henry Cavill picks up Nothing the tech and brute hits force. Someone. It's brute, brute force. force. So it worked out really, really well. Um, the only, what, what do you think weakness is? It, we're obviously praising this film. You need to go out and see it in theaters. Yeah. It is a fun, wild ride with it amazing is, action. It is, but to me, it kind of dipped because it felt long. It was oh. two and a half hours. It was a long, yeah. long. Like if they would have cut out, like. I, I didn't mind it we're, being we're, so long. We're nitpicking, right? Yeah. So if we're nitpicking, okay. like it was too long. The part for me yeah. could have been trimmed down. Mm -hmm. And it, then it, it, it would have picked up a bit. There was where, like a, where in it was it dragging? Like specifically? There was a specific oh, arc. There's a specific arc that felt kind of unnecessary. Kind of was shoved oh, yeah. in there that we didn't really need. Okay, so there are you talking about the broker? Yeah, the broker. And yep. it was kind of unnecessary. There's this blonde uh, character, uh, the White Widow, who is a broker of this information because these nuclear weapons have been stolen. And that's uh, another thing about this. You would think, oh, come on, Joe, not nuclear weapons. But no, this one really convinces you and engages you in the film the entire time. Uh, the film isn't interested in, in social commentary. It's not interested in politics. It's not pushing an agenda in, in your face or even behind the background. This is a straight up action film with all the tropes of Mission Impossible, like those seconds 
ticking down and uh, is he going to do it in time? It's complicated you know for no he, reason. You it's know he's going to be like saving it in time, but the tension is still there. The tension which is, is still, still there. great after six films. Right. <laughs> and so that's why we're so surprised is that how can it still engage us like this when it's using these tropes and oh, he's not a pilot, but he's piloting this this helicopter the that best. That was outrageous, but cool. <laughs> it was so dumb. But cool. It was great. It was cool. It was really cool. Okay. <laughs> and I enjoyed it, but watching it's like this is so stupid. This helicopter He's right. It was stupid, but for me, stupid in a good way, uh, because he's literally trying to ram, you know, the uh, he's up with the, the helicopter way. out of the sky. <laughs> there, there's a there, yeah. There's like a helicopter sequence in the Himalayas, and they're like chasing each other. And wow. so he doesn't know how to fly a helicopter, but he's also like the best helicopter pilot, pilot in the world. Ever. But see, uh, it, but it gives the director and action choreographer the the opportunity to use really unique shots. Yeah. And none of it looks CGI. I mean, these, this dude is literally pulling himself up a rope, and, and the way they put the camera in certain areas, you could tell, wow, this shit is real. Of course, a lot of practical effects and movie magic, but it's worth going alone for the bathroom fight scene, which is perhaps one of the most fastest uh, and well choreographed scenes. Too and short. It was way too short. short. I it, was, the whole it, was, movie. it was good. It was really good, and it wasn't. This dude, I wanted more of it. John Lark is his name, which I thought was maybe a play on John Wick, because he's as good as John Wick is, because he's beating up both Ethan Hunt the best and one. Henry Cavill's character. So I'm like, holy crap. All right, guys, but let's get right down to brass tags. We're super satisfied with the action, uh, the effects, the stunts. Uh, even the story, even though it's kind of standard fare. Uh, what a, and, and supporting characters, what about his team? Yeah, they were good. I mean, I, I felt there was parts in the movie where I, they were kind of missing, mm -hmm. and but they were really impactful when they were there. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I, I think that they involved this team well enough, at least in my opinion. Uh, they're always there when he needs them, uh, last crucial minute kind moments, of thing, yes. crucial moments. They yeah. are in their spot on the team, though they've done that several movies ago. Yeah. And it's just more of the good stuff, more uh, of the good. Um, a character appears from the previous film, Rogue Nation, that sort of kind of integrates themselves into the storyline and, and, and is moving along with the team. And I think she does a great job. Uh, this is uh, Elsa. Isa? I don't, I don't remember her name, but whatever. She's a fantastic character, and it goes a little bit into Ethan Hunt's sort of backstory and what makes him tick and, and how do you get to Ethan uh, in order to sort of ramp up the intrigue in the film, and I think it works. All right? So let's go final verdicts. Joe. Final verdict. I'm going to give this... An 8 out of 10. Oh, an 8? Yes. Yo, why not a 9? Because it, in the <laughs> middle, it kind of dragged down for me. Like, it was like unnecessary. Yeah. But throughout the whole thing, it was amazing shots of the chase scenes, the mm -hmm. fighting scenes. Uh, the helicopter was amazing. There's so much he, here, he, Joe. You're not trained. Nine. He trained so hard, he even became a pilot. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Come on. But, but. At the end of the day, okay. it's like the other ones. Uh -huh. It was a, a great ride, but right. you're gonna forget about it. Ah, you, that's yeah, you true. will always yeah, remember yeah, yeah, that yeah. bathroom scene. Yeah, yeah, the bathroom scene. You will remember that, but and you're not gonna remember the beginning or the, the middle. And stuff but like yeah, uh, we we recorded this review already, <laughs> and uh, I, I I had forgotten to mention the 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 police. The sort of it gives you a feeling of Call of Duty, the Russian level in the airport. For those gamers out there that know what I'm talking about, they got something like that in there. They even have a beautiful underwater shot uh, where oh, he yeah. tries to find a creative way to basically uh, capture this um, head of the syndicate that's a very dangerous person from the Rogue Nation film, and he finds a really creative way to do it. Um, but what about you, Alex? What would you rate it? Do you agree with Joe? Yeah, I think this is an eight. I think it's a really solid eight. It was like super enjoyable, but this this is nowhere near a legendary film. Like legendary film, yeah. you'll remember every detail you want to watch. Well, that's a again. ten. That's a ten. Yeah. So on this, our scale, you yeah, know that. Yes, but this is nowhere near that. Okay. Like this isn't a movie where you're like, hey, do you want to go see this tomorrow? It's like, no. Mm -hmm. I think this was really good to see once. Yeah. You want to see it the, the weekend or maybe like within the couple first couple weeks it comes out, mm -hmm. and it's a definite. It was like entertaining yeah, all the way through. It was a little too long. It did drag in the little. Uh, a little bit and meandered a little bit because it's a spy thriller. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of, they, the movie tells you who the bad guy is really early in, and so they try to do a little twist and turn, mm -hmm. but was I was they ever, do a few twists that, that were like good. That. Yeah, they, but they weren't, they weren't like, Really good. They're really right. they were good. You could, you could still predict who was yeah. the villain. You knew what it was, was very easy. Makes you yeah. kind of guess. It's so like, like what no, are it like, was very obvious, Joe? <laughs> yeah, he had a mustache. 
Like, yeah. Mm, come on. Yeah, all <laughs> so, the evil people wear mustaches. So, like, uh, for us... A God damn it, is this a spoiler, it, motherfuckers? No, in, in, the, in right. the trailer. In the trailer, you well, know all, all of that. So, for, for us, like, sixes and sevens are above average. Like, eight's, eight's a good film. It's a really yeah. solid film. Nine's yeah. excellent. And I don't think this hits excellent. Like, it's... Yeah. it's, it's, it's <laughs> I want to give it, so my final verse, so that's an that's 8 out of 10, good. 8 out of 10. I want to give it a 9. And on the initial recording, I gave it a 9. Here's the reason why. I went one point above because of all of the effort that Tom Cruise puts into this role. The practical effects, yeah. the stunts are all real. And this dude is old and he's still chugging along and he makes it feel like Rogue Nation and now Fallout is the prime of Mission Impossible series. And this thing has been out for two decades. When he was a little kid, man. Was Have you it? seen what like, Mission kid. Impossible 1 looks like? Yeah. What he looks like yeah. in it, Joe? It's crazy. He's coming fresh off of like Risky Business or some shit like that, Joe. It's not that old. Yeah, no, it is that old. Look it up. It's, well, okay, maybe a few years after that. But still, <laughs> it has been like 20 years, I think. Oh, my gosh. But, okay, so, but to still be in that kind of prime and cranking out consistently good uh, films... Uh, I, I wanted to give it that credit. But over time, since we've had a day or two to think about it, and remember, our reviews are literally 15 minutes after watching the film. So we have a kind of a different review style. But sleeping on it, I do agree with you guys. I, you it's can't. an eight out of 10. Yes. Why? Because you're not gonna remember Anything. all the plot points. It is derivative in many, many ways. But here's the thing. That's not a bad thing because you don't care that it's derivative. You don't care that it uses, oh, we gotta cut the wires in the bomb and this and that, and the same things that we've seen over and over because it's so well executed. But because of that, and because you'll forget some of the major plot lines, it does end up at an eight out of 10. These guys are right, yet again, uh, for uh, <laughs> uh, Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible Fallout, which is, it's interesting, because did you see Bethesda tweet at Tom Cruise? Well, they were like, hey, man, Tom Cruise, we really loved your film Oblivion, <laughs> and now we love your film Fallout. Uh, call us. We'll give you a head start on the <laughs> next one. Because <laughs> Tom Cruise is making films with uh, the titles from, uh, 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 oh, my gosh, uh, Bethesda. Bethesda. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Um, and I think it's really cool. So his next film is going to be what? Oh, I don't know. St Starfield? Yeah. <laughs> Skyrim? Yeah. <laughs> Star starring Skyrim. Starring Tom I'd watch it, honestly. Starfield, me too. I'd watch it. I, I, I'd watch, I'd watch <laughs> he it would too. do his own stuff. Oh, so, you know why this movie can't be a nine, right? Why? Because his arms don't make the noise. Oh, in the oh, trailer. Oh, yes. <laughs> Henry Cavill. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Stick around if you want spoilers. If not, uh, we'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. All right, guys, welcome to the spoiler section where we, you know, basically really? get into the nitty gritty. So Henry Cavill with a mustache is the bad guy. But it's not a big deal because, like you said, in 20, 20 minutes, 20 minutes they tell into you the film. Guy. Why? Uh, there's a phone scene where you see that the, the, the bad guy's phone is broken, but when Henry Cavill turns in, he's like, this is the it's evidence that Ethan, not broken. Ethan, Ethan Hunt is the bad guy. He shows a face down. Right. And, and that around. happens like right away. away. But then they show dun, you, dun, clearly dun. show you the screen. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, great. He's it happens guy. right away, so you know from the very beginning that he's the bad guy. Well, but they try the a different too, twist though, later on. In the trailer, it looks like... Uh, Henry's fighting Tom Cruise. Yeah, so they, they, they shouldn't like he's a helicopter. bad guy. So they do this thing where this John Lark person is a, is obviously a good guy and he's a mole and he's a, is actually a syndicate operative, which the syndicate are the bad guys and the leader of the syndicate is who this plot uh, line centers around where he has managed to uh, obtain three nuclear weapons and he's going to set them all off. Uh, and the syndicate is serious business because they've already set off an AIDS epidemic, smallpox, smallpox, smallpox. Ep epidemic in, in uh, uh, Pakistan and China Kashmir. or something. Kashmir. Kashmir, yeah. Uh, and so they're like, okay, these guys are serious. They're going to do something about it. So that's when the broker character comes in that she really had no purpose. Uh, I don't know why she was there. Is she a famous actress or a famous singer? Because she didn't really no. look like somebody I recognize, but maybe she's like a European pop star. I don't know, but we were confused as why she was in there because she doesn't really factor into the plot much 
Um, she other kisses than, him awkwardly. Yeah, it's yeah. real weird. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, none of that mattered because her and her brother were trying to... Also creepy mustache. Creepy mustache, another Bad villain. Uh, basically break the guy out. That's when Tom Cruise comes up with a creative idea to instead uh, trap the police escort and gun every good guy down, which is what would have happened in this sort of dream sequence where Tom Cruise, you think Tom Cruise has to actually execute a police officer. Yeah, because he well kills done so shot. many people in this, this movie. And, but he's like, I draw the line here. It's that like, was well done. And you know it. He kills bad guys. Oh. The, the and pilot. it was touching that he wouldn't let good people die. So it's Tom Cruise's fault this whole film happened. Because he didn't want to let one of his team members die. What's his name? Luther? Luther. Yes. Yeah. So Luther gets caught and he's like, uh, it's either Luther or the nuclear device. Any other agent, and this is pointed out in the film, would have just killed Luther and, and that and saved the nuclear device from... Did you guys pep. find the Alec Baldwin pep talk a little cheesy? Yeah, I think it was a little. To... It was a little cheesy. It was nice, but it just he went a little too far. He's like, "This is the reason why I love you and I trust you because you care about the one." I life. thought it was gonna turn and... into a villain yeah, because he was like was monologuing so much. Yeah. And you think it's because they were like, "Oh shit, he's in it, but he's not really." We need to find something. We're to paying get him, to him the Alec Baldwin salary. We gotta yeah, get something. Yeah, we gotta give him some. And that's a shitty part that I didn't like. They killed off Alec Baldwin mm -hmm. for seemingly no reason. Henry. Cavill once he's re revealed yeah, to be so a bad guy. Well, he they use the mask, that, that mask effectively that's been in the Trick. film since like the first or the second one. No, Which we look... need those kinds of props. Oh, hell yeah. Those masks are amazing. Where do you there's get a guy, those? There's a guy that makes them. I mean, they look, at, you have not seen this hyper-realistic ones? Oh, I've ones? seen the hyper They're really expensive. Though, but they are oversized like Trump and Putin. Yeah. Have you seen that one? But if they make them smaller, they look really realistic. Um, and I, uh, so they... Trick Henry Cavill to revealing he's actually the, the, the unknown process? operative. They the re process. reverse Scooby Doo him. Reverse Scooby Doo him, and then uh, and then they're like, Boop, and it's um, what's the guy's name? Uh, yeah, Simon Pegg. Simon, Simon Pegg. Pegg's character. So uh, they do that. They find these nuclear devices uh, at at uh, in the same location as Ethan Hunt's wife, because Excellent. this guy is mad obsessed with destroying not only the you know the world so that the world can restart. After great suffering comes great peace. He thinks if he fires off these nukes, he'll bring down the world governments, which makes no sense, but whatever. Uh, but he also wants to kill Tom Cruise's wife, and that's kind of some of the dream sequences Tom has And he wants to frame Ethan. And frame, uh, yeah. frame Ethan, He yeah. hates him that much. So uh, they eventually get to the area with his wife, and he has to like play dumb, like he doesn't know his wife. And her new husband's like, hey, baby, so like, happy to go lucky. And, you know, it's a, kind of a creepy, not a creepy scene, but just a, a weird scene. <laughs> uh, that he has to, you know, hold back his feelings because he can't be with her no more. He is now having feelings with... Ilsa. Ilsa, Ilsa, Ilsa. Ilsa. We don't sister, forget her name. Because they look the same. They, yeah, they do. They do look the same. You show me a, a picture type. or something. He, had, he definitely <laughs> he has definitely. a type. <laughs> they show a picture and the two girls side by side look very similar. But in the film, they don't look that similar. They but do. That picture they do. Um, and so, uh, you know, they all go there to set these nuclear devices off and they only have 15 minutes. Now, this one... Longest 15 minutes can, ever. Yeah, this one cannot be cut unless this other one cut is at the same time. Plus, the fail-safe ha trigger has to be outside of the, the piece. And they were like, this is the most secure bomb system. Once it starts, it never stops. But then they find a way to make it stop. So I thought that yeah, was kind of convenient. Be a movie. All right, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, so, but it's really still te uh, tension-filled because why? Because oh, you mean the, the hel helicopter scene. Right. And he doesn't know how to fly a helicopter. He's they like, make hey, a I'm going to go chase him. How? I'll figure so Henry it out. Gets on a helicopter. He's gonna chase him down in I'll a separate helicopter. He's like, uh, "Are you in a helicopter?" Yeah, I'll figure it out. I was like, "What the?" Fuck? That's 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 the tagline of the movie. I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> and he figures it out every single time. But the problem is, There's is no that way. I think we lost Alex there. He was making groaning noises when, when oh, God, they made, Cruise they, was trying to ram the other helicopter uh, out of the sky. They made a point, like they specifically had dialogue in the movie that says, "Wait, he's in a helicopter. He doesn't know how to fly a helicopter." I know. I know. All they had to do is just have him get in and start flying. And be like, "Oh, Ethan Hunt can fly yeah, a helicopter. He's a that, make, that makes sense. He's a badass." Like that was the one. <laughs> time <laughs> the script doctor missed something. He gets in and he's like wobbling around, he doesn't know what he's doing, and within 30 seconds he is in the Himalayas going over mountaintops like through clouds, and then he's dive bombing him, Crazy he's trying to drop it. Crazy maneuvers, trick it's like, maneuvers. It's like what the yeah, hell is happening? He's up with the other pilot. 
with a with, with with the helicopter that's already been shot out because Henry is shooting at him the whole time with a fucking 50 cal machine gun or no I think it was a uh, some big gun. some big ass gun let me a law or something I don't know but it just peppering him and his helicopter's on fire but still it manages to be faster than the other one and uh, he killed an innocent pilot. Ah, fuck him, Joe. They were bad guys anyway. You don't know that. You don't know that. He was just no. a pilot. They pilot got hired. for the peace crew that they were over there. Were, oh, shit. Tyler. He kills all he sorts of people. He did kill an he innocent him. person. The guy's like, I'm just trying no, to get paid. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. Because remember, the pilots do try to shoot him. And then, oh, okay. So they're all Not from the other no, one. No, they did. They did. He didn't. The, uh, the one that he commandeered, there was nobody in it but him. So if somebody jumps in your car, would you try to shoot him? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that these you're good, the bad guys. The good guys, the Peace Corps have guns. Yes. No, I don't think when so. When you're in Kashmir, you got a gun. All right, fine. <laughs> That's a contested area. So yeah, um, and and although these, and then the helicopter crashes and it spins, and and everybody is still in the helicopter going like, like this the whole time, and it's rolling at 300 miles an hour down a Himalayan uh, hillside not calling an avalanche, but whatever, and then it hangs there, and then they have this epic fight right before he tries to pull the trigger while another fight scene is going on with the main villain. A really good and, fight and, scene. And his girlfriend, is, and she's an agent, an MI6 agent, and she's beating him up, and Simon Pegg is being choked and killed at the same time because he's not a good at... Tension. He's not good at close combat, but she is, and they both have to team up to fight him, and, oh, and then finally they cut the wires, and it's great. And that's why it's it was... It's funny, though, because like, he's tied up. He's looking at the bomb. He's like, you cannot disarm it. Ah, he's all happy because like, you can't. Yeah, and he's but still then, alive by the end of the yes. film. And then at the end, he's like, oh, oh man. But I guess they stopped. <laughs> got you. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> hey, we forgot to mention that Superman becomes Two-Face. Yes! I was about to say oh, that, shit, too. They right. got a cool fighting scene at the cliff. But when so the, comes, the ramifications of... Of everything flipping is a little piece of oil line got, got yeah. cut and sprayed right in Henry's face. It and melts his face. It's real gross. And I, I, I liked that because it, it kind of shows, because Henry might be a better fighter than Ethan. They never really proved that. They're both They were, they were both pretty e even. No, no. They, <laughs> they were both awful their ass compared to John Wick, who, who kicked their ass, or John Lark kicked their ass. Uh, but that way they show that you know he's a little bit uh, lessened and Ethan can overcome him in the way that he did. So, and it's a metaphor. Uh, two face. Two face. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I thought you were going to go with the mustache something. No, uh, not the mustache. Did it burn off his mustache? <laughs> no, no it's still, it was still there. It's like patches. It's just gone, yeah, part it's of it's patches. gone. I just think they remove it at the very end just as like the final. We could have got rid of it, but we didn't want yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> screw Justice League. Justice League is what they were doing. Uh, but great, but whatever it it turned out to be great. It did yes. the mustache did separate him from his other roles and make him you know look pretty rugged and badass. So whatever, um, guys. Uh, it, it was Justice League's fault for that fucking mustache thing. I'll it never is. forgive it. I will never forgive WB and Zack Snyder and Josh Whedon that they didn't just let bearded Superman be. Uh, and we're talking about Justice League. This is Mission Impossible <laughs> Fallout. We're done with the fucking spoilers yes. area unless you motherfuckers can think of anything, anything else. else. Yep. No, no it's probably it. best not to think about this movie too much because it'll just get worse. No, it was good. And no, it was, thing, but it's a spy movie. That one and thing then... that you pointed out was one of the... And the reason why we pointed it out is because the film does a good job of... Of addressing things like, wait, that's not, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. wait, no, no, oh, I see, I see. But then this one was, wait, why don't you just say he's a fucking pilot? I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, but they were trying to create fake tension, like, oh, can he really pilot it? But they didn't need that yeah. because the scene already has two helicopters doing tricks, slamming into each other, trying to ram each other out of the sky with a fucking 50 cow shooting, and oh, man, it was, it was great. Anyways, go out and see it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. There will not be a fourth take.